Hey, hey, Dr. Shaddix. Um, I just wanted to, um, I want to mention something and see if maybe you could weave that into, weave it into a conversation one day on one of your talks. Um, it's regarding nitrogen that's in rainfall, right? I don't know much about this, but I, but I heard about it, um, years ago. But anyway, I did a Google search and came across a publication, um, from the USGS. Um, a study called uh, Nitrogen Concentrations and Deposition in Rainfall at two sites in the Coastal Bend area, South Texas. Um, anyway, if you uh, if you have any 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 comments on this subject, I'd, I'd appreciate hearing about it. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know the gentleman's name. He didn't leave his name, and that's a okay with me. That's fine. You don't want to leave your name. Um, so the question was about nitrogen deposition in rainfall. And for, I do get that question a fair amount, far more than I, you think I would, but I do get that question occasionally. And um, so those of you who may not be familiar with it, when in lightning and rainfall, there's a, uh, the process results in some small amount of the nitrogen in the air being deposited when it rains. And so the question is, how do, we, how do you know? How do you know how much is being deposited and should we count on that and rely on that? And whatever the you know whatever his interests are, the question was how you know you know how, I heard about it, but is it true? Basically, is what I'm hearing him say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to go find that information. And if I can get this, okay. So if you uh, if you go to yeah, thanks, Damon. He's, he's got to go. Thanks for coming tonight. We'll see you next time. Uh, if I can get this without screwing something up, it'll be a miracle. So the United States and Europe, Europe has one as well. If you're in Europe, I don't know the name of their, their system, but they do have a similar system. Has a nationwide network called the National Atmospheric Deposition Program. And what it does is it accumulates data from hundreds of weather stations around the United States. And f on their website, you can simply just Google National Atmospheric Deposition Program, and you'll come to their website. Now, I'm gonna show you the quick and simple way to get some information, but keep in mind, this is sort of just the basic, the, you know, the basic, uh, entry level sort of data set. There's many, many, many more sets of data than, than what I'm gonna show you on this thing. But if you wanted to know how much nitrogen is being de deposited, you can go to this website, National Atmospheric Deposition Program, and you're gonna click up here where it says networks, and you're gonna to go to the very first elevator choice here called National Trends Network. And that's gonna bring up two other little options. One's called the NTN gradient map, and the other one's called the NTN Inter Interactive Site Map. Okay, I think NTN stands for, I don't remember what it stands for. Something, I don't remember. Nas oh, National Trends Network, so NTN. I'm gonna show you the gradient map in a minute. But right for now, I'm gonna show you the inter interactive map. So if you're in the United States, this is gonna be useful to you. If you're in Europe, just keep in mind, there's a similar system over in Europe. So when I click on that map, actually they have some um, points here in Canada too. You're gonna see a whole lot of pins on this map here, okay guys and gals? And these pins are the locations of weather stations around the United States. Now this is only a small portion. I'm not sure why they didn't include them all. Um, all of them, they may all be on a separate system, I don't know, but there's many, many more stations than what you see here. Uh, anyway, so the blue ones are the ones that are still um, operating, the white ones have historic data but are no longer operational. So what you'll do, he was in South Bend, Texas is what he said. So I'm going to go down here to south of San Antonio. The closest station that's on this map is this TX-03 in Beeville, Texas. And I'm going to click on that little blue marker, and it's going to bring up a sub-sub uh, menu. It's going to have the location. Some in the, now in the old system, you had to use this um, this in this number here, this TX-03, and you had to know what station you were actually wanting to pull the data from. But on this system now, with this map, you can just simply click on Data Access. There's a button that says Click here. And when I when you click that button, it's going to bring up this uh, 
page that has a big red box around this thing. It says caution, a build and report feature from individual sites. They're having problems. So and it says build a report and data period. And if you select if you select this window here, you can't see it on the on the um, on the YouTube, but it's going to give you an option of weekly, monthly, seasonal, or annual. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, it's broke. <laughs> I don't know why. That's what this whole caution thing says. It's messed up. It doesn't function right now. I don't know why. But it's even easier than having to select that. We can simply go to this um, little tab here and says trend plots. Okay. And you can, when you click on trend plots, you're going to see a number of graphs come, graphs come up. And keep in mind, guys, in fact, I'd probably show you a picture of it. I probably have a picture of it on my, on my computer somewhere. These are not the weather stations you buy at Walmart. Okay. These are weather stations about the size of a car. They're usually fenced in. They're usually solar powered and they do an enormous amount of sampling. Okay. They are pretty accurate and they're not cheap. This, I'm assuming, I could be wrong, but I'm assuming this is one of the benefits of the, the U.S. government funding this stuff like this. Because, you know, oftentimes we wonder, what does our government do? Well, I'm assuming this is what part of what they do. And they've been doing this since the early 80s. And these are, these are highly accurate, very involved weather stations. It's, it's literally like the size of a car, okay? And it has big antennas on it. And, you know, and there was one at the Fort Lauderdale Research Station. Still is one down there at the Fort Lauderdale Research Station, and um, and so I know I could go to that station. That's where I pulled all the data for um, um, for my research, and know that that number is accurate. It runs soil soil numbers and soil temperatures and soil um, values, and then water numbers and so forth. Okay, so when we pull up this graph, this says pH. Okay, we can go down here to what to plot concentration it has sulfate nitrate ammonium calcium magnesium potassium sodium and chlorine concentrations then it has an option for equivalence okay then it says deposition okay in deposition you have hydrogen and sulfate and all these various things and then on the, at the very end you have total nitrogen deposition and when we click that the map above changes and notice it goes from 1982 all the way over to 2022 and on the y-axis it has nitrogen in kilograms per hectare as nitrogen okay so this is again this is very general data you, there's it's, there's much more involved than just this and there's a whole method behind how they calculated it and all this there's a lot more to it but the, if you just want a 10,000 foot view of what's going on in your world in your area of the united states you can pull up a, a graph like this and it says, you know, let's see, two or three years ago, the deposition was 4.5, 4, 4.8. So let's just say five, five kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. So for those of us uh, who, who don't speak metric units or SI units, what is five kilograms of nitrogen per hectare? So this is per year. This is the annual deposition. Okay. Annual criteria, five Let's just say five. 49 kilograms per hectare is one pound of N per thousand. So if we just say five kilograms per hectare, and let's just say 50 kilograms is one pound of N per, per thousand, then you're getting roughly about a tenth of a pound of N per thousand in rainfall annually over the entire year in south bend in the south bend area of texas so that's how you would go find that information you can snoop around here and look around and there's there's reports and you can pull excel files and there's all sorts of stuff you can get you can get much more detailed than this but this this that's, that's what this is saying as long as you know that 49 kilograms per hectare is one pound per thousand then you can make sense of these numbers okay now, what I'd like to do is go backwards just a little bit here and show you what the gradient map looks like. So that was the interactive site map. Remember, you go to networks, national trends network, and then interactive site map. That's how you get to where I was. If you want just a really broad view of the entire United States, you can go to NTN gradient maps, and it'll give you various options for years to select from so over here you'll see all the years all the way down to 1985 and we're going to click on 2021 or two whatever 
and you'll see all the various elements and depositions. You have concentrations and you have depositions. And if we click on the nitrogen PDF, nitrogen deposition PDF, you'll see a map come up. And I uh, don't know if I can make that any bigger on here or not. I'll do my best here. But you'll see down here, that, that point down here, I guess this is the average. Well, or no, that was for 2022. It says 3.7. Uh, maybe I was looking at a year or two prior when I was at five. But it says 3.7 down here, that same, uh, same experiment state or the same collection station. But look, well, look, you can see the rest of the United States. If I can get this to work here, you can see the rest of the United States and get a general idea where the depositions exist, going ranging all the way up to about eight kilograms of nitrogen per hectare, all the way down to zero. So the majority of nitrogen dep depositions occurs in the Midwest around the, in the Great Lakes and you know Detroit and Chicago and all the way down to where I'm at in, in Lexington, this whole area here, the Corn Belt Range, basically. Okay, all this area here. Okay, so that's what you—that's what you'd see if you wanted to see the map of the general map of the United States. Now, as you've heard me mention many times, that uh, or you know, sometimes that the the um, probability of seeing a turf grass response to sulfur today is much much greater. We're seeing it happen more and more frequently today than we ever did in the past. And I've mentioned to you many times that that is very likely a result of our removal of sulfate, sulfur in our rain uh, from the cleaning of emissions through the industrial process. We've cleaned up our emissions into the atmosphere. The acid rain that we experienced in the 80s and 90s has been drastically reduced. And as a result, we don't have near as much sulfur deposition compared to when we did in the 80s. I've mentioned that to you. But how do I know, right? Well, the reason I'm convinced is because when you look at these data, when you look at maps like this, and you see this is sulfate depositions in the United States in 2021, you'll see it ranges up here in the, you know, in the Chicago area, about five kilograms per hectare down. So that'd be a tenth of a pound per thousand down to Louisiana area around 13 kilograms per hectare, which would be, you know, you know, two tenths of a pound per thousand, something like that, or three, you know, a quarter of a quarter of a pound per thousand. Okay, have sulfate sulfur. So, but you see the green, you see the greens on this map, right? A lot of green on this map. Most of the United States is well below five, six parts per million or six uh, kilograms per hectare. Now. Let's go back and look at, at a later date. That was 2021. Let's go back and look at 1985 and look at the sulfate depositions in 1985. And look how red this map is in 1985. Well in excess of 25 kilograms per hectare, which is a half a pound per thousand square feet. Okay. In the majority of eastern, well, even west of the Mississippi River, but majority of the United States east of the Mississippi River is saturated with sulfate sulfur in the in the in the rain. Okay, it's the depositing sulfate in the rain in 1985 at a at a tremendously high rate. Okay, now for turf grass, it was actually benefic beneficial. <laughs> because now we've cleaned it up, and you didn't see this. And then the numbers were five and six, and then here they were. You know, what would it be? Five times that, six, seven times that. I mean, very, very high. It's not even, this scale is not even the scale. This, this top of the scale is only 24. And this red is way, way deeper red than this scale is. So who knows? I mean, I guess I can go look at the actual value. The point is, is that um, that's how I know. Well, that's why I'm convinced. I shouldn't say I know. But that's, that's why I'm convinced that uh, the reason why we're seeing sulfur responses nowadays where we never did in the past is because of that that charts like that where we have data going back 30 years and we had so much sulfur in the rain it was beneficial to crops you know at least the sulfur was i don't know in the long term whether it was beneficial to our ecosystem but to the crops it was able to they were able to use that sulfur and now it's not there and we need to supply that sulfur